Because today you guys have probably had a long day, yeah? No one has, some people like, uh, <laughs> I wonder what kind of jobs you guys are doing, yeah? What kind of jobs you guys are doing. So I want to do what you guys are doing. You're like, I didn't have a long day. So anyway, just let's, let's just release the stress a little bit just to open up the minds and get ourselves ready for this, yeah? It's going to be exciting. And to do that, I have a very simple activity we need to do. Just like a quick one, okay? All right? So just stand up, just stand up, stand up. Today we are here to understand the hustle and the activity we are going to do is just going to guide us through to this, yeah? And we have a very simple demonstration for it, okay? So what I say is what you say, what I do is what you do, okay? Are you guys ready? Are you guys excited? Me, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Okay. So back home we have this person called Jamila. Jamila is a very popular name back home. Yeah? And she's a mother. She likes to cook food for her children. So Jamila is a very active woman and she's a hustler. You're going to see why she's a hustler. But before even we can go there, are there people here who don't know how to dance? Like you, you say like whenever I go out, I don't dance. I just sit down because I can't move. Like I don't have the flexibility. How many guys? No one? Sabi. <laughs> Sabi, for your exception, I've seen you with my own eyes. <laughs> yeah, so, so there are people, some people are putting up their hands. Some, okay. But today you're going to see them, okay? So what I say is what you say, what, you, what I do is what you do, okay? So I begin. Mama Jamila, Mama Jamila. Mama Jamila, Mama Jamila. Mama Jamila, Mama Jamila. Is cooking, is cooking. Is cooking, is cooking. With her right hand, with her right hand. With her right hand, with her right hand. Mama Jamila, Mama Jamila. Keep going, keep doing. Is cooking, is cooking. With her left hand, with her left hand. Mama Jamila, Mama Jamila. Is cooking, is cooking. With her right leg, with her right leg. Mama Jamila, Mama Jamila. Is cooking, is cooking. Your right leg has to be moving. Is cooking, is cooking. With her left leg, with her left leg. Mama Jamila, Mama Jamila. Is cooking, is cooking. With her head, with her head. <laughs> Mama Jamila, Mama Jamila. Your head has to be moving. Mama Jamila, Mama Jamila. <laughs> is cooking, is cooking. With her body, with her body. <laughs> Take a seat. <laughs> yeah, this is like a good one, right? Yeah. So this is how we, we often loosen up, yeah? You guys are now feeling free, right? You've had a long day. I hope you're now free. So uh, to, to open this up, uh, see ya. Uh, Joseph Vajuk or Yoshi Vajuk um, and Dolgozom Optimonk. Ah, uh, no, and, op, uh, and, old, uh, and Dolgozom Customer Success Manager <laughs> Nel Optimonk. Okay? Akram has not understood. <laughs> I just introduced myself. So I was saying that my, my name is Joseph. I, I, I'm the Customer Success Manager at Optimonk. Okay? And today we're here to understand about the hustle. I think this is like a very popular word. How many guys have used this word before? You have, they have, she has, you have. And according to your personal definition, what is, what is hustle to you? Like, what, how, do you, how would you define it? Mm -hmm. Extra work for extra money. Extra work for extra money. Hmm, it's a good one. Extra work for extra money. Somebody else with another opinion. Somebody who drives? Towards success no matter what. Okay, who drives towards success no matter what? You know, extra work for extra money, somebody who drives to success no matter what. Anyone with the last opinion? Shalanki, you had raised your hand. Yeah, yeah, maybe a mixture of it. <laughs> <laughs> a mixture of both of it. Opinion of Akram. You go for the opinion of Akram. You know, back in the day when we were in school, every time like, somebody would be like, Let's say, like, for example, Danny, what's the answer to this question? And Danny says the answer. Shalanki, what's the answer? You said, I was going to say his answer. So they'll ask you, what was his answer, you know, just to feedback. Yeah. Okay. But in any case, um, hustle, hustle, just to understand where the word hustle came from. Initially, hustle was a term used for gang-related activities. Yeah? This is where it all came from. If you were walking on the street carrying your bag of money and somebody came and put you on gunpoint and says, give me your bag. He hustled the bag out of your hand. Is this now making sense? Um, another situation could be, 
in case you are inside the house with your family you're having you know dinner and stuff like that then some people just came and said everybody down you know give us everything you have you know everything so that means they hassled everything from your house okay so this is where you know this whole hassle thing comes in and it has been one of those words like you know the way you know let's say let's let's give an example um you know how these very bad words have now come into english words eh? for example some people know those bad words like akram which bad word english bad word i'm not gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> i knew that was going to happen the f word you know these words come out like you're somebody's walking on the on the pc <laughs> here boss mike oops <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know these kind of things right it's it's now like it's part of it doesn't mean anything like it's not bad it's just a reaction and that's how hustle is coming to the same you know what like it, into the same english word so we use it frequently for almost everything yeah but to open up this whole session i want us to start with a quote i don't know if this is oops i think something is is wrong all right i'll just do this i think this is easy to just open this up we have a quote here that says that good things happen to those who hustle how many agree how many don't agree 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 good things happen to those who hustle major emphasis is on hustle you know the effort you put into making it happen good things happen to those who hustle oops oh i've discovered how this works now all right oops so just to understand your whole definitions you guys had your own definitions and you opened up and you all had your own opinions there were just like rough sketches of some ideas that were put up you know like in terms of some definitions of hustle some could be saying pushing roughly you know a very good example could be nfl players you guys have seen the super bowl rugby players when those guys are going to like put the ball down they're like pushing each other to just get the ball those guys are hustling in there the word hustling uh you know obtaining by forceful action you know somebody takes something away from you like without saying anything like you know that thing give me that hustled it out of your hand yeah another one could also be a state of great activity those who went for campus festival you're on this side of the stage the pizzas and burgers are on the other side of the stage and you're asking the girlfriend do you want something to eat then you're like yeah so you have to hustle your way through the crowd great activity so much is going on but you're hustling your way to get pizzas yeah and making something happen you know if you're going to make something happen and then push forward in spite of obstacles these are like if you notice like within these whole definitions it, it it brings out one element out of it all it's being aggressive yeah because you cannot be a hustler and be like yeah man, i'm hustling and you're just standing <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i mean i'm hustling like someone's like what are you doing just, just hustling yeah yeah i'm just hustling because there's nothing going on yeah there's nothing aggressive so this is why uh, <laughs> all these definitions everything you said has some bit of being aggressive in it okay but you know the way um we have these kind of definitions of like i mean say using the word hustle for everything that we do you know like you're working on the computer and probably doing your work and somebody's like yeah are you creating an account for a client yeah i'm hustling for this client it's crazy you know and this is what you keep on saying you use it all the time the same way in the business term hustle also found its way into the business term okay and the definition for hustle in the business world looks like this movement towards a goal by which motion itself manufactures lack hidden opportunities and charges your life with more money meaning and momentum and that's what you guys are here to hear today right i don't know if you guys are excited like it was going to be we're going to be sharing a lot the highlights you can see are the words money meaning and momentum and for any person who is going to be hustling it could be in anything could be your relationship could be right now in your personal businesses could be here at the company the hustle always has a connection money may not be your end result but then these two always determine what you get at the end of it all okay all right so to carry on through we want to just go to understand some like we just talk about some of the real time hustlers we all know like we have seen them on tv we have we have heard about them and does anybody recognize this face of course. marketers know these people this marketers yeah spend a lot of time on facebook meanwhile guys are coding for you just they are clicking like 
<laughs> like, I'm not dissing your job. I'm not dissing your job. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> he has recognized. <laughs> he has recognized his face. Does it, anybody else know this guy? Has anybody heard of his name before? Neil Patel. Neil Patel. If you guys like, I don't know what kind of uh, feeds you guys get on your Facebook walls, but every time I open my Facebook feed, I see his face. It's like he's haunting me. You know. Sign up and learn digital marketing. You know, he's haunting me. And basically, I'm gonna give you a profile of this guy. Who has heard of Kiss Metrics here? Kiss Metrics, Crazy Egg, Hello Bar. All these companies are under this guy. He's the founder. Yeah, he's really he's really a hustler, yeah. But let's just understand where he came from. So Neil Patel, just like anybody else. Before he started doing business, he began way back in high school, okay? Together with his cousin. They were like the popular businessmen. So what they used to do was, this was something I also used to do when I was in high school. I, I related with his story, you know, growing up. He used to burn music on CDs and sell them to, you know, people. Like, they, they find the latest kind of music, burn them on CDs and then sell them to, you know, colleagues and stuff. And this is what they were doing with that cousin. So this, this, this gave him the ability to understand how business operates. Yeah, along the way he finishes college, he, I mean he finishes high school, joins college. In college he wanted to start up his own company of course, and then he started by trying to understand this whole digital trend. Because that's the time when the internet was starting to become popular and people were saying you can make money out of it. So, along the way Neil Patel finishes college. He decides that I'm going to now invest money into starting up a hosting company. And you can see over there, Vision Web Hosting. He decided to, you know, put up this whole idea. He got so many people interested. Investors came in and invested the money. He got money, like grants from people, family, and all those kind of things. So he joined this money and he promised some people that, yeah, at the end of the day, we're going to be getting money back in returns. So that means that him being the CEO with all this money, he needs to get the right people to work for him. So he got two executives, had people to like, you know, lead the company and give it the direction he thought it would go to. So first way to motivate them, he bought them houses. <laughs> That's a good motivation. I imagine just like Chaba waking up in the morning is like, Joe, good presentation. We have a house for you down the street. <laughs> Next to Kashai. <laughs> motivation. I can be here every day in the morning. Like, is there another presentation? <laughs> you know? It's good motivation, yeah? So he decided to buy houses for his two executives to just start it off. So it's like, these guys work, but you know, as, as, as much as you might always have top people to work for you, there's always something that comes up. It's either they will lead your company to success or down the stream, yeah? And his luck wasn't up here, it was down. So you can see where it all ended. The company say, got bankrupt, said losing money. These guys, you know, quit their jobs and left also with some part of the money. Like there was not so much management in terms of accounting for where the money has gone, how it has been spent and all of this. So money was swindled. And I think for anyone who has invested $1 million, when you know that you have reached the point of rock bottom, there is no way to come back up, some people get depressed and commit suicide, yeah? Yeah, I, I th no, suicide is not my next thing, of course, after that, but I'm saying, I'm just trying to say, some people don't know what to do with their lives from then. So, 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 so say, okay, you know what? I'm going to start robbing guys, you know, start going for Kasha Gabo's house first, you know? Try and get that money. <laughs> Gabo is just laughing. So anyway, so you see, Neil Patel took this as a challenge. He knew that he has, he has been there before. He has seen what hustle is like. There are very many people who are successful even when they've gone down the stream, but you can always make it back to the top. So next thing he knew that he had the knowledge, he had the skill on, you know, social, I mean, search engine optimization and digital marketing, and he was very good with public speaking. So he decided that he's going to start doing trainings and start helping marketers, you know, grow and learn this, how to hack the code of search engine and also digital marketing and all of this. So people started signing up for his courses and all of it. So so it grew and he said getting back the money in return so this was all in the all of growing back getting back the money and paying his debt okay so at the end of the day he get he got the money back he paid out his one million date you know million dollar date million dollar date okay and then of course today he has these three companies under his name now these companies are supporting companies like Amazon you know Google and they're you know like the, the guys behind it now and some People here might be using Kiss Metrics as well. So you're also supporting him, you're giving him some more money, yeah? Next person that we're going to talk about, if you guys don't know this person, I am walking off this stage, like I have gone. Today, I'm just telling Chaba, I stopped on the fourth, fourth, fourth slide, yeah? 
Okay. Mm, you can go. I can go. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Just somebody. I think I've done a good job explaining about Neil Patel. Some people are already saying mm, they know him. Yeah. Quickly, somebody who can just like share, like what do you know about Steve Jobs? Expensive iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> Expensive iPhones. <laughs> now I'm talking in terms of like some some little information you know about his biography, like what he went through. He, he, he was stinky when he was young. He was stinky. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As he used to smell. Yes. He, he, he was a hippie. He was a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and All right. He, he bathed once a month or something like that. <laughs> this one, I, I, I didn't know this part of the story, but that's. Uh, and he did his first uh, businesses uh, when he was a hippie. So he, despite of being uh, stinky, he made businesses. So he was really a good. <laughs> uh huh. But, but th this is something really true, right? Yeah, it's true. Because, you know, if I learn next time I'm going to be talking to somebody about Steve Jobs, and I say he used to stink, yeah? He was a hippie, yeah? <laughs> that there will get some people questioning me. Where did you get this information from, you know? <laughs> My friend Sabi said it, you know? <laughs> yeah? But it's good information, yeah? As I read his biography. Yeah? His I biography. It was, yes, true. Okay. Ah, this is new information. <laughs> all right. So just to, let's, let's just move on. Uh, just let's... Uh, have ourselves move on. You know, all know Steve Jobs. He's founder of, you know, Apple Inc. Co-founder, of course. Uh, along the way, you know, he's doing amazing work at getting Apple. I think if there's any company that did the most, uh, the most awesome, say, how do they say, PR? Yeah, PR, public relations. Yeah. Like when the oh, product launches. Yeah, when they had product launches. I think Apple was the one that always shut it down. Yeah, they always came with like the most awesome, and people turned up in numbers to hear what Apple is having. Yeah. So, of course, you know, like Steve Jobs was the guy behind. He was not like a very good, serious guru of, you know, computers. He just had the brains. He knew how to get the business, yeah? He knew where the opportunity was. And, of course, starting Apple Inc., everything goes well. He, new people come into the company. There's a power struggle. Of course, he gets fired as the CEO. I think that's devastating when you're the founder of a company. And then they fire you and say, we do not want you as a CEO of the company. You leave the company and go and start another company and starts getting success. He started next, uh, and, you know, Pixar was like the, the first, I think, computer that was built. It was the next computer that was built that led to the creation of, you know, like the animation, Toy, Toy Story. Oh, yeah. yeah, so Steve Jobs, you know, after leaving Apple, creates this new system and, you know, all of that and starts this company called Pixar and Pixar becomes a big thing. Next thing that we know is Apple is already going into bankruptcy. There was a lot of mismanagement and what these guys decided to do was again contact Steve Jobs so they can merge Next and, and, and Apple together. So Steve, Job, uh, Steve Jobs returns back to Apple and then revi revives it out of bankruptcy and before you knew it, Apple is today a giant, yeah? Sometimes you buy an iPhone and you don't know why you're buying it for a thousand dollars. Yeah? Yeah, like me usually, I, of course I know that. It, they, they have a lot of, you know, a lot of technology into these phones, but I don't know if you guys get that feeling. It's like, I can go and spend this money and buy like three Androids. Buy for my mother, my father, and for me. But again, you're spending it on one iPhone, yeah? Yeah, anyway, so let's carry on. And the next person we're going to be talking about, if you guys don't know this person, this time, I swear, I'm leaving this stage. <laughs> we just get like one or two people to share your hustles. Like, what have you guys been through? Like, what have you guys been doing in your lives? Like, what's that hustle? Like, you've gone through a tough time. You decided that this time, I, I think at this point, I wanted to give up. But then something pushed me to the end. And then I became successful at the end. You might have stories. Anybody? You guys don't have hustles. My God, like, we're having robots in the company. Oh, no, I'm serious. No, 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 you cannot, you cannot leave, like, if, right now, I'm, you know, I'm making 26 soon. I cannot leave 26 years and I've not hustled. From the time when I was trying to learn how to walk, that was hustling. So, <laughs> I don't know if you guys missed the stage of walking. You were born and you started walking, yeah? No, I'm just asking, because, no, no, I'm serious, because when I ask, like, how many of you guys have hustled, like, tell us the story, it's like, nobody has a hustle. Okay, Akram. Yeah, so many of my hustles start when I turn 22 years old. So the part when you grow up, you don't like the part of taking money from your family, so you want to start something for your own. 
I was still studying, I didn't have any idea or didn't have money to start a big business or a medium business. So I started making bookmarks. You know the bookmarks, the paper you put inside the book to mark the page? Uh -huh. So I started a small business of bookmarks. And that, and I had no idea, so I make personalized, so you tell me which design you like or which character I used to make once for Star Wars, Game of Thrones and stuff, and handmade with some cool stuff, and people started buying that. And I made some good money out of it. Like in two hours idea, I just came up with a lot of money. Hmm. Yeah. And by the way, that money that helped me to come to Hungary. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets are coming out now. <laughs> so he made bookmarks to get his air ticket here, right? Yeah. That was a hustle. It wasn't easy, was it? No. Yeah. Some money that you had to borrow and repay back, or you just you invested your own saving. $5. You started with five dollars. Yeah. And generated up to. Four hundred, I guess. Dollars. <laughs> Somebody's saying fifty. <laughs> fifty. Four hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. That's big, yeah. Anyone else? Thanks for that one. You guys don't have a hustle? Okay, Sabi. <laughs> I, uh, I like hiking. I like mm -hmm. to go to the mountains. And about three years ago, uh, with my, one of my best friends, we, we wanted to uh, start a group to, sh to show people uh, the which the mountains where we were. So we started a hiking group or uh, association. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's called trekkings, and we go once a month, every uh, once a month, yeah, to the mountains, to to, uh, to the beautiful uh, mountains and, and countries around us. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that can be a hustle. Yeah, but but that that company is still is still it's available, still, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, on the association, yes, we have a legal form called I guess you that mm -hmm. association, I guess in, in English. Yes, and, and you still get clients up to now? Uh, yes, yeah, we still get clients. Our next trip will be to France, Corsica, ah. next week. But uh, it's, it's not a profit, it's a non-profit one. Okay. Uh, but I get there are lots of people around who don't want to go alone, mm -hmm. or don't, don't know how to go to beautiful places. So I started this one and we are happy to, to be there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> People have their hustles. But you made some money from it, yeah? Good money from it. Good money? Yeah. No, no, no. It's no profit. Right. Th that's, that's a hustle. That is a hustle. It does the value. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's a hustle. You can see, yeah? You don't have money at the end of the day, but you're pushing for something. Could be that one big dream that you're having just to make sure that... You know, some people will start offering free products sometimes to some people, like try... We had this company back home. It's a Crazy Cork. It's called Crazy Cork. And the way they wanted to break into the market is they put up certain sections in the city, not everywhere, where you can go and buy this um, spirit or gin or something. You don't buy it actually, you just go and take it for free. So what they wanted to do was have it as a public, you know, like P their PR. So people start getting used to it and start buying it from like major shops. So if you, if you cannot go and drink it from, say from, from this building, then you can buy it from the street down in, in the city center, Chapel Street or something, yeah? So people were preferring, okay, you know what, let's just go and first taste it, then go to Chapel, to Chapel Street and then buy it, okay? So that was like their hustle. Right now they're like one of the top sellers of like gin in the country. Like you cannot walk to a place and not buy, a, see a crazy coke. They have a coke, you know, a rooster. And when you just see it, you just say, no, I want that one, that's it. Even if you, thought, you don't know its name, just give me the one with the chicken. <laughs> yeah, because that's what everyone knows. If it has a chicken, that's a crazy cork, yeah? Yeah, so basically that was the hustle. And next we just want to see how these are like correlated. We're going to now dive into talking about things like the money, the meaning, and the momentum. How they play a role in what we do in our hustle, yeah? So we're going to use this as quantifiers, okay? Quantifiers. Let's start with the money. This is how they're related. Watch this. The need for money for most of us is rather obvious. So money gives us the confidence and fuels our needs. Basically what we're talking about here is the what. We just need to mark the words, okay? What? At the end of the day, your hustle leads to something. It's your result. Money could just be the standard we're using right now, but your result is what you can replace at the end of the day. Trekking was money, yeah? But now, you, now, now it's non-profit, eh? no prof, non-profit. Yours was the money. For most of us, money is like the, the main thing. If I'm not making money from this, it's not worth doing it, yeah? I'm wasting too much time on it. 
So money for most of us is rather obvious, yeah? It's our result at the end of the day. And, oops, I'll go to the next one. Meaning, but you know, money without meaning gives us a vacuum that cannot be filled. So no matter how much money we make. So what this is basically is answering the question of why. Why? Why do you work for the money? Like, is there a certain purpose? Maybe it's, it's your passion that you say, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm passionate for public speaking. I should just keep on doing this, inspire more people. But at the end of the day, I want to be making money from it. Yeah? Tony Robbins. You know Tony Robbins? Yeah. Guy is making a lot of money from his public speaking. It's like he can fill up a stadium just for his public speaking. Yeah? And some people do that. It's like we have a meaning, we have a cause. Like we want to inspire people, but then make money out of it. Another one we could just say is the momentum. Now this is where things get a little interesting. The balance between the two. When money and meaning are put together, this gives rise to our momentum. Your pace. So this is how we answer questions like when and how we're going to do it. So let's imagine a scenario. We have me who wants to make money, but I'm good at public speaking. What's my momentum going to look like? It's going to make me start by coming here and speaking to you. Before I know it, someone from the audience is going to recommend me to speak to some other congregation or some other audience at a certain place that I know somebody who can speak and deliver a very good session. This person, let me recommend you. Before I know it, I go to that place. And after doing about 10 gigs or 15 gigs, I start getting the urge. I'm like, you know what? It's about the time I start charging people because now I have an audience. People are starting to like my page frequently. I am, I'm building an email list. This guy is looking out for like newsletters from me. You know, they want to get like ebooks and stuff. You know, that motivates them. So I start putting charges on probably ebook or something. I start putting charges on anything. And then before you know it, even just to hire me, it's money starts coming back. So what's going to build my momentum is how uh, the places I actually can speak to and the process it, it takes for me to start now making the money and using the meaning that I have to inspire the people, yeah? Does this now make sense? Yeah, yeah? Savi, Egan, Renben, Pontoshon? <laughs> Egan, Egan? All right. So I want us to just basically make a structure for yourselves. Like just, just create a structure for yourselves. So this is what I'm going to talk about. The structure is basically we have spoken about the meaning, the money, and then the momentum, yeah? For you, what comes first? Is it the money, is it the meaning, or is it the momentum? We should just have like two people to quickly share what their structure looks like. I'll give you a very quick example. Structure one in this section shows money, meaning, and what? And momentum. Probably there's a person who works like this. For them, what, they, what, they, what comes first is the money. If you told them there is money in this, Nigerians. Nigerians will not care. When you tell a Nigerian there is money over there, they don't care about the meaning and the momentum. It just says, where? Let me start. So Nigerians have money, momentum, and the meaning comes last, okay? <laughs> no, you guys have spilled the secret here. <laughs> so next time you're speaking to a Nigerian, be careful with the way you present the word money. The moment you start saying, you know, I was talking to a friend who has money. He's going to ask you, where is he? Immediately, does he have slots for like, me to go and start making the money with him? He's not going to care about the meaning. He already has the money. He, 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 next thing that comes next is the momentum. He wants to have the momentum, so he, he has to coordinate this. You'll find like, this is their structure. For you, what, what works for you here? Like, you can create, it's not specifically like here. You can create it using the three. Just like in one minute, I think it's easy to, to just understand yourself, like what comes first, okay? We can have somebody from the back this time, yeah, to share. For example, I would say uh, with my startup now, I'm at the second, the meaning, money, and momentum, which means that first I have my why. Okay. That I would like to build the startup to uh, get the best developers mm -hmm. for the best companies. Okay. Then uh, I really need to make money from this as fast as possible for it to grow mm -hmm. and to get it bigger. And when these two things add up, I have the momentum. Okay. Maybe. So your momentum comes last, basically. I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah I think in, in this situation at the moment, yeah. Okay. Because without money, I'm mm -hmm. not sure how I can grow. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. I think that's really clear. You see, people have very different structures. Yeah. So yours is the second one. Mm -hmm. Somebody else with a different variation. Yeah, you can share yours. Mm -hmm. What's your variation like? What's your structure like? I also think that. You also think the second one? Yeah. What's your hustle like? What's your hustle? Like he has said he's starting a company. And what about yours? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
singing. Yeah. <laughs> He's laughing. You don't think he can sing? He can sing. He has told me he goes for the choir, like a choir, yeah? Yeah. Before. We are, yeah. Going in a choir, so. But we are doing it all this for the like, you, for just. Passion. The passion, yes. Inspiration. Uh huh. Okay. So. So in your case, you'd say yours also lies in the, in the middle section here. This is yours. So yours is past the meaning. You think, okay, we are going to go and inspire people. Money is not in the picture. So yours is just directly to the momentum. Money can come last. They pay you if they want, if, if yeah. they want to or not. You see now the structure starts changing, yeah? Yeah. Yours is the fourth one. No, no, his is the fourth one. So momentum. No, it can't be momentum. So he is, they have a meaning first. They want to yeah. inspire people, yeah? So that's why I say it, it cannot just be close to only this. So you can imagine what your structure would look like. A very good case that is not here is the next thing I'm going to show you. Who knows this guy? <laughs> mm, some people are really smiling. Uh. Just, let's just, before even I show you what his structure is like, what do you think this guy's structure would look like? Meaning. So you always think, okay, meaning. All right, somebody else with a different opinion. So meaning, momentum, and then the money comes last. Yeah, Let's check sure. if you guys are right. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> They're right. You saying Bolt has meaning. His meaning is going to be: I need to break world record. I need to be faster than the person who you know who broke this record before. And then what's going to come next is for me to beat him. I need to have my momentum. I need to get onto the to the truck and train so hard every day. He runs with a stopwatch. If he loses one second behind, he's like, no. He goes back to the start line. He runs again. Yeah? That is Usain Bolt. Then at the end of the day, he knows like when he gets the gold and he gets, you know, to break the world record, the money comes at the end of the day. So you guys were right. Yeah? Kudos. Hand claps for yourselves, guys. You guys got this correct. No, you guys don't want to clap for yourself. You know, we had this thing, I know that some people are like, in just like a second, a few, just like in one minute, let's just uh, loosen up again. I see some people are like, uh, so tensed out. To loosen up again, just stand up, just stand up, just stand up, quickly. Let's just stand up. And Shalanki, go and stand next to Vicky. Okay. And uh, go stand right there. Stand next to Akram. Akram, remain where you are. Yeah, you can stand next to Akram. Uh-huh. Um, you can come here, you just come next to him. Yeah, just like let's loosen up in like a, a minute. So what you're going to do quickly, yeah? I want you to turn to the, to the right. Turn to the right, everybody turn to the right. And give your friend the best massage possible. Akram, close the gap. Move, move. Close it, give your friend the best massage, okay? Yeah, like, if it's, if it's not nice, if it's not nice, tell your friend it's not nice. Tell them it's not nice if it's not no, nice. We'll, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's exchange sides. Let's exchange sides. Let's exchange to the other direction. <laughs> yeah, if it's not nice, tell the guy it's not nice. Get it there, you know. I need my massage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a seat. Let's take a seat. Okay. It's it's all right. So. So I'm just going to be cruising through. I see we have little time and yet we still have some very awesome things. So I'm just going to cruise through, which I'll be discussing in between, of, of course. So now that we understand this whole structure, uh, I want us to just like, oops, to like balance out the three M's that we have. Money, meaning, and momentum. It's important for us to balance it. And if we're going to balance this, it's going to help us understand how our hustle is supposed to be. Yeah, We have to hustle in the right way. Some people hustle recklessly. Just get up in the morning. I'm hustling. For what? I just want to make money, but how? What's your meaning? What defines your momentum? Yeah? So this is where we're going to look at it. So we've decided to cluster these into three categories. The heart, the head, and the habits. The reason why we're doing this is because these three symbols represent a lot about who we are individually. First thing to understand is the heart. There's a quick quote here that says, outside a person's love, the most sacred thing they can give is their labor. Anytime you can combine labor with love, you have made a match. Is this very understandable? Yeah. Yeah? And basically what this means is just, 
do something that moves you it should move you emotionally yeah it should move you emotionally and it just sets your wheels of motion like you have the meaning like just you feel it inside it pains you it's like a it's like a it's like a relationship when somebody breaks your heart you feel emotionally taken up yeah you come to work and don't want even to say hi to your neighbors if somebody says hey akram can you pass for me that thing what my heart is broken <laughs> yeah so this is what a heart is like if it doesn't set your wheels of motion internally it's 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 like it's like you're not living yeah have you heard of those people who say that you wake up in the morning these people are actually living they go to work they they do amazing things go on vacation but they're dead i don't know if you guys have heard of those things like you're living life but internally you're dead you don't have a purpose like you don't have something that drives you every single day i don't know if you've heard of this saying that's why you find people are so depressed. People commit suicide. You see somebody so happy, but you're asking, this guy says, I've been in a dark place for like most of my time. I could give you a very good example. Let's say the guy of Lincoln Park. The one who committed suicide recently. This guy is like, I think he made a lot of money. Yeah? He's a rich guy. Going for shows, traveled the world. But something internally moved him and forced him to commit suicide. Yeah? So this is what it's just supposed to set for you, the pace. So to understand this, we're going to first, uh, because, you know, our hustle is the result. Basically, if we understand our result from inside, yeah? Some people are like, no, come on, Joe, no. <laughs> yeah. If, if you have this whole thing about your, you have your, your meaning internally, you know you have a, you know, you want to get your end result. You need to work around a certain formula. It needs to get you somewhere. If you're having a heartbreak, to get, to get out of the heartbreak, you need to start doing something else, yeah? Say, date another person to forget your ex. <laughs> yeah, people do this, yeah? Don't laugh. Some people here have done it. I am one of them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, basically, let's just understand this in a very simple equation. So, if X plus Y are our momentum and meaning, what, sh what should be our what? One. One is going to be our what? So X is? <laughs> you guys are lost, yeah? All right, let's, let's, okay, let me just actually now, because I don't want to confuse you, I'm going to take out the whole thing of meaning and what. So let's just do this math equation, guys. X plus Y equals? So X is? Y is where you want to be. Sorry? Y is where you want to be. No. <laughs> so one minus? Y minus <laughs> okay, what's the answer? Y minus one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's one minus y. That's the answer. I'm going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> you see how this has become interesting. Some people are like, oh, come on, like this. This confuses a lot of people. Many people don't like to walk around formulas. That's a fact. I hate walking around a formula. I want to have something. Just do it. Don't tell me that this is a formula. It's a structure. So many people don't like it, but it's it's necessary to guide us. Yeah. So, just like the way it is, even success itself, even our hustle, has an equation. And for many people's equation, it looks something like this. Hard work plus luck equals success. This was a study that was done asking a lot of people questions about this whole thing. Like, for you, what does success mean to you? And most of the people who gave their answer had it evolve around hard work plus luck. So, you're giving all your effort. Luck is your fate. You don't know where you'll end up at the end of the day. Yeah, it's either you succeed or you won't. But your hard work defines it and maybe you'll get successful. But to a hustler, our equation changes. This is how the equation looks like. You have your end result, which is basically your success over here. Your hustle is your struggle. Your luck is your fate. You don't know where you'll end up at the end of the day, but your unique talent, what do you have to offer? The people who hustle, yeah? If you're a runner, your unique talent is you can hold your breath for a long time and you know how to keep up with your pace, yeah? I don't think I could do what Bolt does. He's talented in that. He has built it over a long time. It's his unique strength. And with his luck, he doesn't know if he will win a gold medal, but for sure he's going to win a gold medal. And then his hustle, like every day he wakes up in the morning, he has his agenda, he, has, he knows what he goes through to get the publicity or so you know how to build that audience. And then success comes at the end of the day. Okay? All right. So we're shifting on to the next cluster which is the head okay the head basically goes like this the best people all have some kind of scar me this is one of my favorite clusters 
the best people all have some kind of scar. Does this ring a bell? You guys have scars, like you, anybody has a scar? Yeah. And like, if you don't have a scar, you can't learn from this. From that. Brilliant. If you don't have a scar, you can't learn. You don't have anything to reflect, for, you know, like reflect. Mountain climbing, those who go hiking. You have your scars, right? Like when you sleep on like a rock, just, you know. About soccer. Soccer? Yeah. Okay, like soccer players, yeah, like. <laughs> and those people who know this soccer thing. <laughs> Yeah, so soccer is among those things, like you live with a lot of scars. Kasha a lot of scars, yeah? And they know, yeah? So, basically, we need to also understand that, you know, when, when we have the, the, the head, the head helps us re have a reflection of what we've been through before. If I went to the gym, and yeah, of course I said going to the gym. <laughs> So I'm pumping a lot of iron, right? The following day I'm going to come to work and if somebody touches my shoulder, I'm like, don't, don't touch! Oh, it's painful, man. And I can't sit down, yeah? So painful. When I'm walking, I, I move everything in slow-mo because I don't want anything to, to touch me, yeah? Last time Vicky came to work after going jogging, she would barely walk her, like, she's, you know, <laughs> like, it's like a robot, yeah? She was feeling a lot of pain on her muscle. And if anyone hit her on the leg, even if it was a bike, don't, you know, just don't. So it's painful. So all of these things remind you of where you've been from. So the moment you keep on doing it continuously, it leads to something. So we have this towel. <laughs> yeah. These are scars. You know that your mattress has been eaten, your bed sheets, your clothes. Those are scars, right? <laughs> but I'm not talking about that. Why I brought this up? This is a lab rat. I'm going to give you an example. This is a lab rat. And lab rats usually go through what they call homesis. I'm going to describe what this is to you guys. So lab rats go through what they call homesis. So when doctors are in the lab trying to like invent a vaccine, to see how this vaccine is going to be effective, say if it was for pets or anything, they're first going to induce the disease on any of these lab rats. So the moment they keep on doing that, then they'll start getting the vaccination for it. And they keep on, you know, injecting the vaccine and they see how these animals react to it. First time, the body is going to be re like rejecting the, you know, the, r the rat is going to go through a lot of processes. Some rats even die. But there are those rats that can hold up for a long time. Because they keep on injecting certain amounts, the immune system of the rat starts, you know, starts becoming resilient. It's, I use the big word. It starts becoming stronger. So this, this, this disease does not work on it anymore. So they start saying, I think the vaccine is now working on this one. So let's try it on other, you know, lab rats and test it continuously. So basically what this does is if you have homesis, homesis is basically describing the induction, like inducing a lot of pain onto you, yourself continuously until your body learns to fight off the pain and you become stronger. It's not intended to weaken you, but to strengthen you. Best example is to make you understand is homesis shows that repeated exposure to small doses of stressors or pain does not weaken you, but surprisingly strengthens your biological system. Yeah? So, here's where homelessness and hassle go together. So you have a lot of pain, you have these things that have been reminding you of all the things that you've been going through when you were growing up. It's crazy, you've, you've struggled so hard, sometimes it, used, it, it pricks you, yeah? you remember it in the mind, it pains your heart, it makes you want to get up and shout or something. Yeah? And to make you understand this, I have a video for you guys. This guy I'm going to show you guys. First of all, let me just talk about him in like a second or two. So, Ray Lewis is a Super Bowl champion. People know him, he's crazy. He's now retired, he used to play. Man, when Ray Lewis got on the field, it was something else. There was this energy that used to just bust out of him. The team, that is like the opponent coming to face him. Whenever he used to like, his team used to leave first and he comes last, cause he needs to process, yeah? So when he comes onto the field, he has a lot of energy. He's screaming like a madman, he's kicking things. And that team already starts getting, you know, tormented, yeah? Like we have a beast on the field. This guy is going to kill us today, you know? And this is how they used to win. Because it started from somewhere. And let's just watch it and listen to him. Be very attentive, okay? For years, from the time I was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I've never saw a woman takes so much physical abuse than the way I've seen my mother be every freaking day of my life. And 
can, I'm helping her, but I can't help her because I'm not strong enough. I don't have the muscle to get these men off my mother. My mother's a very high yellow woman and every time they hit her, she would bleed from her eyes. And she would walk around for days with sunglasses on in the house. I said, Ma, I need a deck of cards. Last altercation we got in, my stepfather hit my mama so hard in the face. My stepfather hit my mama so hard in the face, I called her. And I looked at him with this rage and this pain in my eyes. Like one day, one day. And I took this deck of cards. I couldn't live in the house, so I had to live in the garage. And after this last altercation we had with this guy, I ran to my garage and I grabbed this deck of cards and I flipped the seven and I started doing seven push-ups. I flipped the six, I did six. I flipped the nine, I did nine. I flipped the two, I did two. I flipped another nine, I did nine. Until I got all the way through the deck. Jack, queen, king, worth 10. Jack, um, aces, 25s, and jokers, 50. Until I got sick and tired of what pain felt like in my gut. It didn't even matter to me no more. Because I started shuffling them all over again and that's when I started doing my sit-ups. Because I wanted to make sure sports wasn't the reason why I started training. It was to make sure man never put his hands on my mama again. That's why I started doing what I started doing. Sports was a byproduct of, of what people started to see. It was the behind the scenes that was driving me crazy. At 10 years old, I picked up these deck of cards. And one day I counted them. And I found out it was 52 of them in the deck of cards. 52. And I turned my greatest pain into in my business with the greatest achievement ever is the touch of the Lombardi Trophy. 52 cards. And ironically, my number ended up being 52. So that is his part of his pain. You can see that there is a lot that went through, that he went through. And uh, I hope this is going to keep working. <laughs> All right, I'll just... Uh, Take this back. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to cruise through all of this really quickly because I think we have limited time. Uh, so basically what you just had, this guy has a lot of sequences. He has a meaning of why he started because of his mom. He built a momentum. He said walking out crazily, flipping cards and doing press up, push ups and then sit ups and all of these things that just led to him becoming tough. Pain was his reason for starting what he did. At the end of the day, he started playing Super Bowl. Like he started playing in the NFL. And I, on his last game, he won the trophy together with his team. He was a leader and it was crazy. You guys just don't take time off, just watch his videos off YouTube. You will be inspired, trust me. So his name is Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis, okay? So just to close this off, you know, like, uh, this is just how to indu uh, induce homelessness. This, you have all formulas of inducing homelessness into your system. If you're having, like, you're overweight, do two, 10 push-ups every day. You will lose weight. If you hate someone, start by saying, see ya, you know? Hello, and that you know it, it continues. So we, we live in a society where everything is defined by laws, yeah? Religion, company laws, your personal laws, yeah? Relationship laws, don't come home after 10 p.m. <laughs> don't. Even if you, you, you are outside just like sneezing, and it's like one minute after 10, don't enter, stay out. Laws, yeah? The wife is always the lawmaker in the house. <laughs> it's crazy. So these laws also like, just even for hustling, we, we also have laws for hustling. Do something that moves you emotionally. We already discussed this. We said you have to, as long as it's in the heart, you know, it moves you, it push so hard, yeah? Keep your head up and your eyes open. A quick example would be, have you ever, have you ever tried walking in the rain? Like when the rain is falling, have you ever tried opening your eyes in the rain? Do you walk like this or you walk like this? Keep your eyes open. 
for opportunity. Now, this is where you cannot miss to see an opportunity. Because you walk with your eyes closed, maybe you might pass a place where you could hide and keep away from the rain for a while, but you close your eyes. But this thing is like if you're in a hustle, keep your head up, your eyes open. Seal the deal and make it real. We have different kind of people today. People who are usually visionaries, that those who are visionaries are people who have the mind, like they have the goal, right? They will tell you, Inonik should be a success story from Debreton, you know, coming out of Debreton. That was the idea. But you need people who are implementers to implement it, start developing these crazy ideas that make it outstanding. And then we have those guys who strike a balance in between. They play a role in implementing, and then they play a role in being a visionary. So if you're going to seal the deal, you need to understand what kind of personality you have. Yeah? Are you an implementer? Are you a visionary person? If you're a visionary, then how can you work on the other side of it that helps you implement? Yeah? So basically, this is what we can say about this section. I hope you guys have understood the laws. Yeah? And we have the last section, which is basically the habits. Now, habits are things that just start out as hopes. You know, habits, habits are things that you do regularly. I'll give you a quick example. Picking your nose in public. You've seen those guys who all the time they're like this, yeah? <laughs> yeah, those guys who usually don't like, you know, like, you don't even shake their hands. This guy picks his nose. Some things like procrastination. I'll do this tomorrow. If you overdo it, it's a habit. Another one could just be like, you know, what's the funniest you could have? Say, snoring is not a habit. I know it's, it's, it could be a habit. They say, just change your sleeping position to avoid snoring in the night. Because maybe if you sleep like this, you snore. When you sleep like this, you don't. So your wife always pushes you to the other side. So you don't snore. Okay? So, basically now we understand what habits are. But then, you need also to find out how you can do some things to change your habits. If you're going to hustle, you need to understand what your weaknesses are and change those habits. Yeah? Introduce something new into your system. All right, so how we can change our habits? We all have a formula on how to change ha habits. But if we're going to do the hustle, we need to work around things that govern our society. For example, this, we brought up a cycle. On this side, we have potential. We have people. We have proof and projects. And I'm just going to cruise this so quickly. I know we're out of time already. So basically what these are, we're going to break this down to this. So let's start with the potential. So potential is basically your capability. What can you do? If you don't understand this, you cannot hustle the right way. Because if you don't know what you can do, then why are you even hustling? Yeah? So th that's where you find things like, you know, if, you can, if I'm a good storyteller, I'll be at the stage telling people stories, like now. If I'm good at, you know, public speaking, I'll, I'll be here so, you know, speaking to people, yeah? So I know my potential. And that is, if you understand this, it's, it's a start to change your, your ha habits, okay? Next is also to understand about the people. People in your community affect your habits. I'll give you a quick example. They say racism. Everyone doesn't like racism. Is there somebody, anyone who's, who likes racism here? No, no? Yeah, I also don't like it. I don't, you know, just don't like it. So I'm just saying that, you know, like racism is induced by people. For example, if the Arabs who blow up themselves will go and put bombs and blow up people. We hate Americans. They are, the ch children are born, they're, in, they're told these kind of stories about hating Americans, and this is what they're going to do. It becomes part of their cycle. Projects. This is what you're actually doing currently. So what are you doing currently? For you now, you come to the day job every single day. You come and you work every day. You go back home. So if you understand that this is what I'm doing currently, it starts building this momentum for you to understand that you can change your habits in a certain way. Okay? And then lastly, we have your proof. What's the credibility? What's the result at the end of the day? What would people say about you? Yeah? If somebody came and like, what projects have you done? What have you contributed to? Like if somebody came and said, do you know Akram? Or do you know, you know Danny or something? What has he done? Can you recommend him? That's the proof. If I recommend him because I know him, it's proof. So all of these things affect your habits. And if you understand those, it helps you change those few things. So this I'm just going to skip over. It's because I've been speaking about them as I was explaining. Like what are skills and talents and all those things, okay? So basically, summary of the hustle is just what's your take back? That remember that hustle in your heart, do something that moves you emotional and sets your wheels of motion. Hustle with your head, keep your head up and, you know, your eyes open. Don't miss out the opportunities. Always go for the risks, yeah? Then, hustle in your habits, seal the deal, always make it real. Just be you, close it off, and that is where we come to the end. Oops. Oops. <laughs> this is the end initially, so it, it's the end. So I'm saying this is where we come to the end of the uh, you know, presentation. You guys have any one, two, three questions? One, last one? Nem? Nem to dog? Nem to dog? Okay.
So guys, thanks a lot, Kusanam, and uh, you're not what Kifanok. <laughs>